Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday and welcome to today's Insight webinar. Today, the first one for uh, 2017 and uh, seeing as uh, it's a new year, I thought we'd kick it off with something really special. So uh, January in the Leverage program is a kickstart month and uh, it's, we've already sort of done the Tribal Council last week. So hopefully for those of you who came, you've managed to book in uh, some time either for yourself or for your team to get super clear about uh, you know, what you want to continue working on as well as uh, the things you want to change in the coming year. But now we're into uh, our Insight webinar. And those of you on the program will know there are three types of webinars we run in Leverage. Uh, and one of the ones I love the most is these Insight webinars. It's an opportunity to sit down with uh, you know, an advisor who's absolutely killing it in their business, or alternatively, a uh, subject matter expert who just uh, knows their stuff, or uh, finally, a pioneer, someone who is just doing innovative things and has been doing them for a while. And today, uh, you know, we've got an opportunity to sit down with somebody who is probably in his field, not just a pioneer, but doing this kind of stuff long before anyone else does. Uh, Robert Skinner has been uh, working in the field of advisor, uh, content platforms, member site, whatever you want to call them, since uh, 2006, I believe. So long before anyone even thought they needed one, long before anyone even uh, knew it was something they needed, uh, Robert saw the opportunity and uh, to say it's been a, a long road, but a very successful one is probably a, a, good, uh, a good indication. You know, I, uh, it's funny. I think a friend of mine who had a lot of success in the online space in a very short space of time once said to me, it only took him 10 years to become an overnight success. And I think, uh, you know, there's a bit of this in here. So really looking forward to getting the opportunity to walk you through uh, some of Robert's story. Here's the thing about Insight Webinars. I've got a bunch of questions I really want to ask, but uh, these are equally uh, dependent on getting some questions from you. What do you want to know? And uh, filling into Robert so I can make sure that when you walk out of here, you've got the insight uh, that you need from you know, how to launch a member site, uh, what to do when it's up and running, how to get people to use it, and a whole bunch of technology and a whole bunch of other stuff. So here's the thing. We're going to get interactive. So I want to kick off as we mean to, uh, as we mean to continue. So do me a favor. Open the Q&A box. And I know Sean, you've already nailed it. Open the Q&A box. And uh, if uh, you can hear me, see me, and you can see Robert's uh, face on screen, and it's all looking good, just type in good to go or G to G if you want to go shorthand so I know that uh, you're ready, I'm ready, and we're all set to go. Andrea says good to go. Excellent. Glad to have you here. Tom, mate, awesome uh, to have you coming along. Looking forward to catching up with you next week. Greg, welcome back. I hope you had a great uh, Christmas break. And Perfect. Thank you, Shireen. Welcome. Good to see you here, Jeffrey. Mate, delighted that you were able to make it. I hope uh, you're feeling a bit better uh, and that you've got over um, what you need to. Kyle, you're in the chat box. That's great, but welcome. Uh, and Leon, mate, good to have you here as well. So we're all good to go. So do me a favor. Uh, I'm a visual kind of person. So I'd love to know, give me a bit of an understanding. Where are you right now? Where are you? What are you doing? What are you wearing? What did you have for breakfast? Just give me a bit of insight into... Uh, you know, where you are at the moment, so I can get a visual image of, uh, of you know, a virtual crowd out there. For me, I'm in uh, our uh, studio, which is about 50 meters from home. Thank God the temperatures come down. I think it was about 40 degrees in here the other day, but uh, it's looking like a good day. Andrea says she's casual Friday, sitting in rainy Melbourne. I, know, I just can't believe it. Craig was telling me uh, that it's 17 degrees in Melbourne. Meanwhile, here in Sydney, it's, uh, it's scorching. So, uh, Perfect. Our casual Friday is good. I, I, believe it or not, I'm actually wearing shorts down below. So I've got the newsreader sort of uh, kit on. Kyle, would love to know where you're at. Sean, I'm guessing at home in Bondi. Kyle, lovely. Man, I used to live in Bondi. I used to live just on Sir Thomas Mitchell Drive. That's a great place to, uh, to work from. Uh, Sean, boardroom in Cairns City, overlooking Cairns Convention Center. Very nice. Not far from the beach, I'd say. Greg, in the office, pants, shirt, went to a cafe for eggs and toast. Beautiful. I had some Canadian bacon for breakfast, which is uh, fantastic. You know, the big thick stuff. Leon, in his office in the Hunter Valley, sipping on a flat white. Damn, that is a good time. That sounds like a good Friday. Robert's got a shirt on. That's excellent. That's good to know, Robert. Welcome. Uh, and sitting in my study at home in Colorado, just in shorts, no PJs, tea and a veggie on toast. Nicely done. This sounds like the kind of crowd I like. A little bit informal, but ready to go. So do me a favor. Just so we uh, kick off on the right side. Tom says, balcony at home in surfers. Everybody's, I'm super jealous of everybody's sort of surroundings. I've got Bondi, I've got overlooking cans. I'm in the wrong place, clearly. 
do me a favor, type in the box, what's the number one thing that you wanna make sure uh, that we cover off in relation to member sites today? So I can make sure that you walk out of here with the insight you need either to uh, avoid your own mistakes, launch your own member site, or just get an understanding of the journey from idea to digital content platform. Type it in the box so I know what's the one thing that you wanna know and make sure we ask today. Can I get in the box while I take a sip of uh, my water? How to get client engagement on the member's site, says Andrea, absolutely. We, uh, Rob and I had a bit of a chat before we kicked off uh, and definitely gonna, uh, definitely gonna cover off on that. Once you have a member, how to keep them engaged. Greg, fantastic, mate. This is uh, music to my ears and I'm sure Rob is sort of listening to this and thinking, yep, uh, I can tell you all about the do's and the don'ts, cool. Keep them coming, by the way. How, what are the magnets to engage clients to site? Ooh, magnets, love it. Yeah, what are the things that's gonna get them there? Fantastic, well look, during the session, keep the, keep the questions coming, because I'm gonna keep monitoring them, and uh, I'll pull them out and uh, give them to Rob as and when uh, they're appropriate in the conversation. So whatever you need to know, drop it in there and we'll work it into the conversation. Tom says, when to provide access and how to introduce them to it. Perfect, Tom. I reckon we can uh, cover that off. So, let's get this, uh, Let's get this horse up and running, show on the road. Uh, quick reminder, whoops, quick reminder to those of you uh, on the members, uh, two things I want you to know for leverage members. Firstly, fortnightly pet stock, we had our first one uh, uh, last week, or actually Wednesday. And this is really key for you to uh, book into at least one of these a month, because this is kind of like our accountability piece, this is our sharing, this is our, our case study uh, about coming in, getting opportunity to hear what other people in the program are doing, as well as you know, really state, this is the things I'm working on and be accountable to the group. So if you haven't booked in for at least one of these every month, uh, I'm gonna be sending the attack monkeys with the wings to you to land on you and grab you. Not really, but yeah, corny dad joke. But anyway, uh, the second thing is, don't forget, 2nd of February is our next mastermind. I'm sure you would have received an email yesterday giving you all the details. There's another email going out today talking about pre-work. And this is super important because uh, Here's the thing, we wanna dive straight into it when we get there. So having you do some of the thinking and be able to report to everybody about your projects, your status, and a whole bunch of other stuff is gonna enable us to make progress really quickly. So make some time next week, it's not too heavy, to do the pre-work so we can come and dive straight into the good stuff. That's enough cheating chatting from me because uh, we're gonna to talk to Robert Skinner. And as I mentioned, I've uh, had the opportunity to deal with Robert quite a few times, well, quite a lot over the last few years, and just seeing his rise from doing something which he was passionate about to just seeing him get more and more traction, more and more successful. Uh, as I said, I think he is one of the preeminent experts when it comes to my members' site. So today we're going to have a chat about you know, how we got started, how we got up and running, uh, some of the challenges, and we're going to answer some of these questions around you know, how, to, how to get good at doing member sites or content platforms and a whole bunch of stuff, and how to avoid kind of creating a void, you know, that, that member site that nobody visits, there's no good content. We're gonna go through all of that. So I'm gonna jump over. I'm gonna stop talking, which you'll all be delighted about. I'm gonna jump over to Rob, stop my share, get him off mute. If I could just get the get, get, get to work. Where's the thing gone? Ah, there we go. Disciplines, why aren't you showing up? Unmute, put on the camera, and away we go. Robert. Morning, how are you? I'm really well, how are you, sir? Good. Am I here? You are. I, I feel you're here. Do you feel like you're here? Yeah, I feel like I'm here. I was a bit worried where you said, let's get this horse underway. And I'm thinking, that's a very nice thing to call me. Or yeah, straight I'm, away. I think I'm butchering my metaphors today, to be honest. That's all right. I'm taking, a, I'm taking a leaf out of my wife's back. She's usually kind of the, um, you know, does, do bears poo in the woods or is the Pope a bear or something like that? It's terrible. But, mate, where are you? Just give us a sense. Uh, every, you got an idea of where everybody else is. Whereabouts are you today? Yeah, so I'm in the Hunter Valley as well, like, like Leon. So I'm in, in Newcastle City. So just sitting sitting in the office. So it's nice to actually have a business that's kind of nationwide, but then still be able to sit in sunny Newcastle, especially when it's 42. So you've been doing uh, sort of the, I suppose, you know, working remotely for quite a while now, haven't you? Oh, when you say remotely, I've always had an office, always yep. needed an office because we've got, yeah, lots of young rugrats as well. So I, I needed to get out. But yeah, I've never, I've, even kind of, um, yeah, lately it's still still Newcastle based. So Good stuff. And uh, how many rugrats? Uh, four. We've got, oh. uh, well, now nine-year-old twins and a seven-year-old and a nearly three-year-old. So 
Wow. It's great. Okay. Did the twins come as a surprise or? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you when, went again. The, um, what, what are the people that do the scans when they said, oh, I haven't seen a twin <laughs> pregnancy for a while. And I'm like, what, what's that? <laughs> it took a little while. Because anyway. yeah. uh, once you get past about three, it's, it's a new car really, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We've got that problem. So if we all go to the shops, we, if, we, yeah, if we didn't have a seven seater, it's two cars to the shops. Perfect. Hey man, been really looking forward to chatting. I think we've um, sort of had dealings with each other for, for a long, long time now. Mm. And it's been awesome to kind of see um, something that you believe so passionately about and mobilize such a great team of people to, to, to implement, just, uh, just go from strength to strength. So I'm really keen to unpack that today. But um, before we kick off, I, I always like to start these things with a bit of a question that I stole from a guy called Tony Tse, who is from uh, Zappos, who I recognize as being one of the the best uh, companies to work at. Mate, on a scale of one to 10, how weird are you? Oh, how weird? Yeah, how weird? I, I, actually, I actually probably think I'm fairly boring. So if 10's really weird, I'm probably a three. Wow. I I'm, I'm, not, I'm not that weird. Have you ever been weird or has it just been a consistent sort of... Oh, it depends how much I drink. Ah, so I, yeah. I, reckon, I reckon I have been weird. After a lot of drinks, I reckon I've been a bit weird. Well, you know what they say? I mean, I like Go on. Getting serious, mate, in my old age. I'm not as weird anymore. Well, mate, they do say that hipster is the new mainstream. By definition, normality is now the new hipster. So it sounds like you're, you're, you're a hipster, mate. I'm there. I'm you're there. The, the neo-hipster. <laughs> Trendy, yeah, yeah. Hey, cool. Matt, I know, uh, well, I, I assume I know a little, bit, a little bit about you and what you do. But for those who aren't familiar with you, for those who aren't familiar with energy, do you want to give us a bit of background as to, you know, what, you, what, what it's all about and uh, you know, why we're having this chat. Yeah, yeah, cool. No, I love to and I, and I appreciate the opportunity, mate. So, and, and I do know over the last however many years it has, we've, been, we've, touched, we've touched base and caught up you know, lots, which has been good. So, um, so me, I'm, I mean, I would still, I'm an ex-financial planner, so I hate saying that, but um, I've been in the, in the industry for I think about 22 years, which makes me seem really, really old. So I think I was in accounting for a couple of years, went into power planning, uh, actually went out into BDM land and um, got a national gig there when I was fairly young. That was kind of mid-20s. And then, and then I saw some pretty ordinary advisors getting some really good clients. And I thought, well, if they can do that, maybe I could have a crack. So, so that was 2002. I went out and um, set up my own planning practice. So thinking that, you know, again, the clients would come, which is funny in a way, because that's kind of then, you know, what's happened with the, with, you know, energy as well. So, um, so I set up my own practice, um, ran that. I think it took me six months to get my first paycheck. So I had, um, you know, I didn't buy a book, had no referral sources or anything like that. And funnily enough, going from a, I guess, having a national role, I had no network either in Newcastle building a financial planning business. So, so that was good fun you know, challenging some of the perceptions of what I had from working in previous practices, even around fees and service and all that kind of stuff. So I think a couple of years into my business, I actually rebuilt the business as well. So this went back to scratch and said, hey, hang on, what, what are we building here? So um, so then kept building that. I was lecturing at the, at the grad school in Newcastle as well. So financial planning, um, that that's part of the reason of where, you know, energy was born. And when, when we talk about energy and the brand and the website still exists at the moment, so energy um, was, if you like, the, the content platform that, that we built. Um, so it was one, one of the motivators, you know, sitting in front of a room with, you know, 30 or 40, um, I'd probably say mid, middle management, you know, doing the MBA, financial planning was an elective. Um, basically, by the end of 12, 13 weeks, they had to produce a, a mini financial plan. So it, it, it was inspiring, if you like, to be in that, that environment and have these people want to learn about financial planning. So, you know, how does estate planning work, all that kind of stuff. And for me to not have any product involved was really good. So I was just paid a well, crappy, crappy um, fee, if you like, to turn up. The amount of work you have to do for teaching at uni is huge. So, so, so part of that was around, right, these people want to learn, you know, and they're, and they're happy to come along on weeknights and pay money um, and actually not get a solution. They, they, just, they just want to learn. So, um, so I was doing that and... Um, as well, in my practice, I saw a couple of bad examples of, um, you know, 
and financial planning advice. We've we've all seen that. We continue to see that. We'll probably always see that. Um, and so in my mind, it was ticking over that, well, and I think the other thing with, which probably all the advisors online would be doing, you know, sitting in front of clients and um, either whether you're doing it, you know, uh, digitally or, or with a whiteboard, I used to do it with a whiteboard explaining how franking credits work or explaining how testamentary trusts works or a wrap account. And I just thought, well, how, how do we teach more people? You know, I, I guess I was just a limited resource that it was me and the client base that I could afford to look after. And I think there were, I think Storm, the Storm debacle came a little bit later, but it was was one story that, that helped me along thinking, well, if people knew what double gearing was, so where they took the equity out of their house and then did a marginal loan on that, and then when the markets fall away, they lose their house. If they understood what was happening there, would they still do it? So mm. so the education piece, you know, was, was important to me. And I had a, had a client that came from a, um, a bank planner, so I won't say which, which bank, um, but it wasn't that one, and, um, and they came in with their with their arms crossed, you know. And they were two successful dentists, and they they had multi million dollars, and and you know they had their money in an allocated pension. And and I said, all oh, right, you know, we talked a bit about the allocated pension. I said, can you explain what the allocated pension is? And I said, what do you mean? And they go, oh, it's never been explained to us. And and, and I found out these guys have paid a five percent interest fee, so I think they put a million bucks in, so fifty grand for a fourteen page SOA. So that kind of stuff just really, you know, maybe doesn't make me angry, but pretty close to. So, so I thought, well, let, let's build something online that is independent, um, that is around education, um, and let, let's tell the world about it. Let, let's, you know, if someone's over in Perth, let, let's help them, you know, get some knowledge. Back, back then, too, when we started, there was no Money Smart. Um, ASIC had a site called Fido, for those of you who've been around, around a little bit, mm -hmm. be familiar with that site, but there wasn't a lot, it wasn't a lot of kind of content. So, so that's where we started, mate. I actually had a, a good friend of mine, a guy by the name of Matt Linnett, um, who um, was a planner, got out because I think more because of the firm he was in, he wasn't happy with the ethics, went out landscaping. And, and funnily enough, when he went out from the industry, he had a lot of his mates go, well, now that you're not a planner, can you tell me how superannuation works? Mm. So if you like where energy was born, um, I wanted to do something online and I had my mate Matt Linnett there and I thought I don't want to tread on his toes because he actually set up a coaching company around money, no product, just coaching on, you know, what, what kind of financial things were. Rang him on a Tuesday and said, mate, I'm thinking about doing this. And we had um, the afternoon that Friday to work through, you know, right, let's do this thing. So, so that, that's where, that, that's my background. So that's where it started. As some of you may know, so energy, and we don't need to spend a lot of time on this unless you really want to, but I don't think it's overly interesting. So energy was um, then acquired by um, Iris uh, now 18 months ago. So that kind of completes the picture up to now. Mate, perfect. The big question I have to ask is energy. I mean, you know, people always ask me about our dairy, which I won't go into right now. If you want to know, it's, it's on the, the lead page of the website. But, you know, where did, um, yeah, where, why energy? As in the name, yeah, mate, or, or the or the, the yeah. name. <laughs> we, we get energy. We get all kinds of things. I get so, so maybe, maybe if yeah. I had my time over, the amount of emails I get with I double N E R G Y, or yeah, they have no idea. So, um, yeah, I might have changed that if I thought that I was going to be, you know, coming across it um, enough. But we we were that name came out after a couple of bottles of red wine, um, Matt. And myself and our wives, I've still got the pieces of paper where we were brainstorming. We're going to do a whole session on that. It's so funny, people's different preferences and values and behaviours. If I look at each of the pages that we had that night to come up with a name, so different. So as in the process of how we how we come up with that name. So, so what we we're trying to do um, was basically have a person, if you like, and I know this sounds nice and fluffy, come to our content and create something stronger. So it was about synergy. So, yeah. so it was about saying, well, that some of the parts can create something um, better, if you like. So that we're playing around with those. The, the other thing that's behind it is Robert Skinner, Matthew Linnett. Our two surnames sound very different, but they both got inner, inner, yeah. I N E R. Um, and it is about the inner and, and Matt's side of stuff, whether you want to talk much about that today is at all, um, the behavioral side of things, um, 
our deep down values that we wouldn't even really know um, how we go about, you know, our daily life and all that kind of stuff, our unconscious, um, you know, is, is that, you know, and, and then I guess we want the energy or, you know, how do we, how do we kind of spice things up? So that's where, you know, energy came from. Look, I think uh, I was in San Francisco with Naomi Christopher from NetWealth and uh, we <laughs> had a few martinis. And I said, Naomi, you're a bit of a brand genius. You know, uh, what's, what, what's the first thing you do with our dairy? And she said, change the name. And I was like, uh, I, don't, I don't really want to change the name. And she was like, well, just explain what it, what it means. So uh, it's always good to know the, the story behind it. So cool. Yeah. Um, what year we're in? About 2005, are we? By, by this yeah, point? Yeah, so that, that's when we got together yeah, and said, let's do this thing. Yeah, it was December 2005. Five. Okay, so talk to me about the first, you know, the first stages, uh, the idea that you had in your head, how you sort of translated that into something, and also give you a picture of whether, you know, what came out in those first stages was what you had planned. So um, basically, the, the first idea was to marry up the technical and the behavioural. So, so um, Matt, as, as, as you know, a lot, lot of work on, he's Myers-Briggs accredited and kind of wondering, you know, why do we do the things that we do? So, so he had some great stuff around there. If I was a financial planner again, you know, I, I, and we won't go down this tangent too much, but, um, you know, we would, we would used to argue that a, that a planner doesn't really know their clients. So yes, we might get their assets and liabilities, their income and all that kind of stuff. But what about knowing the client better than they know themselves? So I've done kind of Matt's course and, and what's freaky is I'm in, you know, I was in business with a guy that knew me better than I knew myself, which was always kind of, kind of scary. So we're like, well, how do we that. marry so that marriage? Oh, it's, that's worse than marriage. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, um, it's like, how do we give people that? So, yep. so the original idea was saying, well, let, let's create a place where people can learn about the technical because there'll be people that want to do that, that want to learn about a subject, you know, the engineers and the teachers. But let's also provide a place where they can learn a bit more about themselves. And, and I think uh, probably all of us, if they're, if they're on your webinars, mate, we're probably at the pointy end of the industry, I would think. And, and I remember reading something about, you know, I think it was in financial, I think it was in Westpac's one of um, their financial, financial literacy studies that, and I agree with it, that's not all about financial literacy, it's about financial capability. So, and, and you, you mentioned, the, you know, the other day around, um, you know, we have so much knowledge and, and we know that eating McDonald's is bad for us. And we know that non-exercise is bad for us, but the majority of Australia, it does that. So it's not about the knowledge. We know that being in, you know, having bad debt, if you like, it is not good, but it's the behavior that lets us down. So we're like, well, how do we bring that together? So the first thing was writing modules. And because I'd, I'd written um, or built uh, this course for the university, for, for me, you know, we had to build a module on superannuation. We had to build a module on estate planning. And then Matt had to build a module on, you know, money personality, on money beliefs, on building your team and all that kind of stuff. So that, that was the first thing. And, and that was hard work for a guy that doesn't like to um, sit down and, and write all day. Um, and those people that have attempted books and things like that, um, hats off to you. But um, so that was where we started. So it was the actual content of you know taking people through and teaching them things was what we started writing so it was you know it was saturdays so let's talk about modules because uh I'm, i know there's a lot of people out or quite a few people online uh who are you know at that point where they go okay i i'm, I'm gonna i've got so much information i've got so much motivation and i want to start producing so you did the the university lecturing which obviously gave you a structure yeah what's the best way in your experience both in you know what you learn and what you learn through the years to to structure a module Mm, um, great, great question. So, um, well, I think what we did or what we always try to do with our writing is assume um, that I'm taking you through that. So, so very much, and even our content and our tactical stuff now, we write as if we're explaining it to you. Let, let's, let's not go, so, so, so using a bit of um, just talking normally. You know, or we, we got, and I won't name the company, but we did get some stuff externally. We did an SMSF uh, module mm -hmm. and we got some guys to write it because we just didn't have a lot of time. And we got it and it was so technical. It wasn't, it wasn't for a consumer. So one thing, um, which I can provide later, I can't remember the name of it, but there is, um, you can do readability testing in Word. So 
Um, one thing that we do do on our modules is make sure that they're written to year 10 level. So that's something yeah. if, you, if you are going to be writing and you're not doing that, um, test, test that. Um, our modules would be unrecognisable, so we uh, we do get them signed off externally once a year. And this is another thing that we had a chat about. That that one thing, um, you know, we probably fell in the trap of in the beginning is we thought, well, once we write it, we're done. We don't have to do anything more. We write this thing and and it's game over. And now we'll go and sell it. Mm -hmm. But um, you don't stop. Like it, you can't stop. So um, and I think a lot of bigger institutions get trapped sometimes. Dealer groups, banks, all that kind of stuff. That they put a project team on building something like that. They build it and then they walk away mm -hmm. to another project. So um, you know, I've still got my super in a. Um, in a, I guess, a bank product. I was licensed for a group called Securitor, so you can probably kind of link that up. Mm -hmm. um, and they had investor education sections. Only it was only six months ago I had a look, and there's the superannuation surcharge in there, which <laughs> I think is around 11 years old. So, yeah. and what that then does it is either as a consumer, I either rely on that and I get it wrong, or I know that it's wrong and it destroys the whole credibility of everything else. So, so that is one thing that if you're going to create content and all that kind of stuff, um, tax content's a bit different but if you've got some core modules um, you know you've got to keep working on them you can't you can't do them and forget about them okay so it's core and tactical and and, and pictures mate so I mean that that's a, that's a what kind of 101 but um, we use a lot a lot of pictures which is you know tens of thousands of dollars worth of pictures so I know there's probably cheaper ways to get them but, um, but yeah lots of graphics where do you get your pictures from we still get them from iStock, so oh, okay. we still pay, pay through the nose for them. So, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Um, I look. One of the best deals I ever got is there's a website called AppSumo.com, which is kind of like a group group buying for uh, businesses. And every now and again, they come up with a deal with deposit photos, who are not as good as iStock, but they're good enough. And they do a deal which is a hundred photos. You can get vectors. You can get high quality. It's thirty nine bucks US. Yeah, right. That's every time it comes around, we, we buy about five packs, and that does us until the next time. So, I, um, if you are going down this route, images are really, really important because you do reach a point where Google images just ain't going to cut it anymore. And uh, yeah, so you need that. The other, it's interesting, the talk normally thing is really, really key. And mm. I know a lot of uh, businesses that I've worked with on content have had a lot of success dictating stuff. Um, so, for example, I do a lot of blogs where I've got a, an, an app called Rev.com and I just dictate what I want to say, pull it off, get it transcribed, which is automatic. Oh, it's, it's quite reasonable with Rev. And then I go through and edit it. And the funny thing is when you're talking the content, it sounds like you and it sounds natural. And I think that's really, really key, especially online where, where people don't have the attention span, I think. I don't know if you, you'd agree with that. Yeah, agree. And I mean, our module pages are small, so so technically, on the structure of, of the module, like um, um, you know, really bite-sized chunks for each page of a module. So so uh, you know, we, we'd be lucky to have two and a half paragraphs per page. Okay, so two and a half paragraphs, uh, lots of yeah, lots of images. Love it. Yeah, and, and tell tell them where they are. I mean, what it's it's funny even now working with Iris that that we appreciate what we've built when we're actually trying to build it, you know, in the expert environment. That even things like table of contents and be and this comes back to and where Matt has Matt Linnett's been a great asset is that people are different. So we need to cater. Um, Donald Trump is never going to read a module. <laughs> uh, he's gonna he's gonna watch a funny thirty second video, but yeah. he's not gonna read a module. Do you know you know who's gonna read a module? What Warren Buffett will. Yeah. So Warren and he'll read he'll read it from page one, you know, to page seventy. And someone like Bill Gates, they he'd use the search functionality. So so when you're building a platform, I think there's a couple of things. One, uh, this is probably a lot of learnings from Matt, is advisor bias. So so we will write if you like, for our um, personality. So as much as me you know, learning about member engagement, all that kind of stuff, um, Matlin and I are very similar in some respects, but very different in others. So when you look at a piece of content, actually, I might tell you this story, look at a piece of content, you might think it's cool for you, but remember, there's probably four main groups of people, you know, within Australia. So, um, you know, Myers-Briggs will kind of take that down to 16. 
Um, so give an example of that because we, we use um, a fair bit of video as well. And yeah. um, in the beginning, we were just curating video. When I mean curating video, we would find a funny video or an interesting video or something like that and then tie that back to money. So that was around the engagement piece of going, well, there's some people out there that just won't read a module or doesn't want to learn about super, but how do we engage them? Well, let, let's put some different stuff on there. Let's show that we've got a bit of personality. Yeah. And there is plenty of free stuff out there. So, so we found a video, National Geographic video on, um, uh, if you like exploring an ant mound in Africa and what it looks like, you know, under the ground. So they found this ant mound. Um, they poured, I think it was nine tons of concrete down. Yeah. The ant hole and then started excavating it and it took them a week and, and i'm watching this video just fascinated and there's highways and there's tranches where they keep their food and then mm. you know, where they waste and all this kind of stuff and i just thought it was brilliant and, and i sent it to matt going mate i found a video for the month you know have a look and he and he came he didn't didn't take him that long he came and stood at my door I said oh how'd you go did you get that video he said yeah i started watching that i said how'd you go and he said i had to stop it i said what do you mean and he goes, I wonder how many ants had to die to satisfy, <laughs> to satisfy humans' curiosity. That is a good so, point. So, so for me, that was a big smack in the face around going, wow. So something appealed to me yeah. and it made him feel sick. So it, it rubbed him up the wrong way. So when we're talking about engagement, both yeah, on, on an ongoing basis, um, and often couples, we use animals, but often couples are different animals as well. I don't know whether anyone's married or got a girlfriend or whatever, but, but normally you don't marry yourself. So you marry someone that's a little bit different. <laughs> um, and I think, you know, one of Matt's drivers around money was, I think IPAC found, found that 70% of um, conflict with couples is money. And that's massive. And, yeah. and often, it's, often it's that they don't necessarily disagree about the end result. They just disagree around the method of getting there. So mm. anyway, so it's a bit of a segue around, you know, being very careful with content that, um, you know, you, you're going to have all kinds of different people in your client base. So you really, we, we actually have a bit of a filter that we take our content through to make sure that we've got something, we call them animals, make sure that we've got something for every animal. This is the, the money personalities thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Which is, which is great. I think it's dolphins, monkeys, owls, and Labradors. Labradors. Yeah. And that's, uh, where can, if people want to know more about the money personalities, where would they go? Because I mean, that's a great model and it's very, been very successful. Yeah, I would suggest, I mean, there, there is, when, when Energy was acquired by Iris, we kind of, because um, Matt, Matt is the brainchild behind Money Personality. So you will still find moneypersonality.com.au. So that's still there. And that's actually Matt Linnett's um, business. There is a version of the Money Personality in our knowledge center as well. But, um, but I, I would say if you want resources around that, you go to moneypersonality.com.au. So Money Personality, just to give people the overview, it's a... It's a personality test, relatively pain-free, yeah. which identifies whether you're one of four different ways of thinking about money. And it's particularly good, I think, for when you've got two couples in the room, yep. giving them the reality of the fact that although they may see eye to eye on a whole bunch of stuff, they're wrong to assume that they're on the same page money-wise. Yeah, and, and I think a great example of that, if I came in to see you, Stu, with my wife, and you were the planner and you're talking about oh rob we could do all this cool stuff and we're going to make lots of money and blah 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 i, I would walk out pumped right yeah my wife would sit in that meeting silent and she'd get in the car and go i don't like that guy <laughs> and then and then i would i'd ring you up next, or you'd follow me up and i go mate sorry we're not coming on board and you wouldn't have a clue why and it's because my wife's all about stupid she's a warren buffett all about you know doing things um the way traditionally if you like so don't don't push the envelope don't put me in the latest kind of hedge fund or anything like that anyway that that's another topic but um but it is very much when we look at the knowledge center i think sometimes people um it's hard to appreciate the journey of, of what we have learned yeah and that is one thing that i don't talk to people a lot about because you just go off on a tangent but we have the content that is there the structure of the knowledge center and the new content does um if you like go through a filter to make sure that we can appeal to the oprah winfrey's who just want to make the world a better place mm. but then we can appeal to like the bill gates that want to learn technically and i get i guess had this mastery kind of thing around them so yeah so the the real learning i'm taking from from this conversation which i think is really useful which is uh when you're developing the content 
not a, don't just think about the hot buttons. Don't just think about the information, but be, think also about the perspectives people have. So when we're doing uh, work on sort of creating niches and avatars, we talk about, don't forget about who you think clients are, understand who they think they are, because that will tell you a lot about and really understand the way to consume video. Andrew has got, a, I, I'm keen to sort of ask some questions about, you know, getting early traction with energy and how to get engagement. Yeah. Uh, but Andrea has got a really relevant question, which is video versus written on, we may have already answered this. So if we have just bat it away, you know, do you have a preference for one or the other or do you just combine both or are there, you know, uh, criteria for using one or the other? Um, so we, so we do both. Um, and I think, both is important. I did have a head of a dealer group one, uh, I think it was a couple of years saying videos to future only do video. And, yeah. and I disagree with him because I had um, the stats. And I think every time I, I jump in the car and then go to Sydney and jump on a train is where it convinces me that video is not the only way because all these people are sitting on the train reading their phones. So yeah. I think I think a mix is important. To give you the stats for our platform, we, we would have, I don't know, a couple of hundred thousand people um, I guess sitting on our platform now, um, 36% of the traffic is videos. It, it is our most popular area. So, um, so videos are important. Yeah. 28, 28% is articles. So, so not that far behind, I guess, is the written versus video. So, so give people the ability to do either is, is what, I, what I would say. So if you can. There's a, uh, I think there's a, there's, a, there's a triangle for this, which is my experience has been if you do video, then you can grab the video, you can turn it into podcasts, you can turn it into snippets, you can then get video transcribed again using rev.com. Uh, so I kind of always think that if you do video, you can, you can use the video content for other things, but if you're just going written, then it, you, you know, it's very hard to take written content and turn it into video after the, uh, after the, uh, after the event. Yeah. Okay. Hey, quick, quick question uh, before we move on. Uh, I often get questions from advisors about, oh, what tech setup do I need? Should I buy a videographer? Um, and then I look at some of the research which says that, you know, what, what are the most important factors when it comes to just getting video out there, which um, it always tends to be sound. What's your experience of, you know, the balance between getting it looking super schmick and just getting it out there? Um, good question. And, and I'm, I'm probably not the best to answer that because we, 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 with our videos, like we obviously don't record, you know, Rob Skinner talking about what a franking credit is. So, so we're, we're not doing those kind of videos. And when we're looking at doing videos because of where our platform is, and maybe, maybe I'll give you a quick bit of history on where, where we try to find our market. So, so energy back in the beginning, we had a consumer offering. We had an offering to employers. So um, employers could, if you like, roll out financial literacy in the workplace. We had an offering for industry super funds and we had an offering for um, planners. The only offering we have, we still have a couple of industry funds that use it, but our main offering is planners. So we did go through the, uh, what would you call it? Um, the trial phase of diff different markets and then we worked out our, our real market. So, yeah. um, so because we're a wholesaler of what we do, we don't have videos where a person is standing, you know, in front of a video talking. So, so, so almost then I'm not, I'm not an authority to be able to tell you, you know, about sound and things like that. Okay. What, what we have found though, Stuart, that one, one um, thing is, so we use a guy by the name of um, Andrew Fife, and I'm happy to say that we use him because um, no one else is allowed to use him. We locked him up in the financial services. So he's the, he's the guy that used to do um, animations on Hey, Hey, it's Saturday back in the day. Oh, wow. Okay. And, and what's really, and he's been on the AFL footy show. He's done work for the ATO and stuff like that. So we, when we were looking at this solution, we looked at, do we outsource overseas? We went through that whole thing. We had quotes from five to 10 grand per video. Uh, we we're very fortunate to find Andrew. And the beauty of working with someone domestically is he gets the Australian environment. So he, yeah. gets, the, he gets the sense of humour. He understands what, the, what superannuation is. He understands what insurance is. So, so we don't have to explain those basics before we kind of move to animation. But our animations are a bit cheeky. So, so underlying the script would be, um, and to give you an idea with numbers, our scripts 
are always 300 to 300 words, 300 to 330 words long, and that gets us to 90 seconds to two minutes. So that that's basically as long as our videos would be. Um, and our scripts are serious, if you like, so explaining the concept, but then Andrew will put a bit of a, a sense of humour uh, on the back of those. So it's funny. I actually think it's harder to write a 330 word script that goes for 90 minutes to 120 than it is to write something that's five minutes long. Would you, would you agree? Absolutely. Oh mate, I've got, we, I've got a new content that writer who is a, who is a from financial, well, he is a financial planner and, and I'm, I'm helping him with that. So, yeah. so he's really struggling and it, and it might, and it's early days, but it, it's, you know, to come in and cull, cull the script. So often, you know, even some of our other writers, you know, they, they get it to 400 and go, Rob, you know, this is as low as I can get it. Can you get in there and cut some yeah. more out? So, I, yeah. um, I, I am not the most, I don't have a lot of brevity when I write. I'm quite long winded and it's something I've had to learn. But uh, I think one of the best uh, bits of advice I, I, I had was, was when you're going through an editing, any word that you don't need is superfluous and in other words, it doesn't add to the sentence, just rip it out. And I think getting into that habit and having a framework as well, we do a lot of work on, on video frameworks, I think is really, really important as well. I think the other thing is, Stu, I find with our videos is don't, don't answer the problem. Like, like where and where I'm trying to almost untrain this financial planner that's writing for me now, you, you don't have to go through and solve the problem. You just, you know, we're, we're not looking for someone to come onto the knowledge center and then be able to go and do it themselves. Yeah. So, so when we're explaining testamentary trust, you got, you got 90 seconds, you really got to give the, the overview and then, you know, paint the picture and then, then they need to go and talk to someone. So yeah. See, Jim Stackpole in a, in a coaching environment once said, you're better off running a, an hour long session on two questions that are really important to ask clients than you are trying to run an hour long session on the whole first appointment. I think yeah. that, that, you know, going really narrow, but really deep, particularly in videos is much better than going wide and because you just, you just lose your audience. I agree. Hey Rob, let's talk about engagement because obviously you've, you've got content. Uh, presumably there's a, I think you did a custom build, didn't you? Technology wise. Yep. Okay. Okay. Do you want me to talk about that? Yeah, that's a, that's a, yeah. That's a, I guess that's that's a, that's a hurdle a lot of people don't have to overcome anymore. But yeah, give us the yeah, two, absolutely. Give us a two minute tech uh, background. Yeah, I mean, if I if I started again now, yeah, it w obviously it would be different. So so, you know, this was yeah. So what was it? Eleven years ago. I think YouTube is eleven or twelve years old. So mm. so. Um, you know, they'll give you perspective. I mean, we, the iPhone wasn't around when we started. Yeah. So we spent 70 grand building Flash or building our modules in Flash. And they were wow. these beautiful books that you could read. Yeah. And then the bloody iPhone comes out, <laughs> uh, which doesn't support Flash. No, so, so 70 grand gone. So um, it was fascinating. What one thing that our web developers, and we didn't, we didn't have the right, we had a supportive web development crew, but they were web developers. So, so they weren't um, technicians now that I'm appreciating when, when I'm in a company like Iris that you see their mm. you know, development team versus these guys that produce websites. So we were pushing our website guys as much as we we're pushing ourselves. But I remember the CEO of that company said to me, um, we kept saying, can we do this? Can we do this? And he said, Rob, look, the internet can do anything. The web can do anything. It is your mind that is the limiting factor. And I, and I, I keep carrying that because I you know if you can think it it can it can be built so I mean we're on our fourth version of, of the knowledge center so it, we did build from ground up um, you know one of the things when Iris bought us our cold our code is quite old and we just kept bolting on so where we were pivoting if you like we we kept using the initial code base and then we'd bolt on something else or bolt on something else. So, so that can create problems, you know, later on that you have all this kind of redundant code. So yeah, so we had to build, we had to build it ourselves. So um, that's been good in some respects because we were the masters of our own destiny, but yeah, um, yeah we probably spent more time and more money. So if you were, if you're starting again right now, yeah. uh, as a lot of people, are, what, like what uh, platform would you use? What tools would you use to build it? If you wanted to oh. get, just get it off the ground. Um, great question. I mean, I remember the coffee we had, mate. Remember you said, can you give me a, let, let's, yeah. let's build a generic knowledge center and put on WordPress and sell it, you know? So, 
um, I tried to sneak that one in the background. You were like, no. <laughs> yeah, well, that's where we were looking. I mean, back then I was looking at, you know, what do we do with a knowledge center? Because we were getting traction and the decision or the running through my mind is where do we take it now? So yeah. other industries or other countries. Anyway, that's a whole, that's a discussion over a beer. But anyway, um, what, what, what I use now, I mean, I think you know more about, about that area than me, Stu. So, so I mean... <laughs> You know, I've not researched stuff yeah, to that because no. I don't have to do it again now. So I'm not, I'm not sitting there, I guess, with my spare time looking at how I build a member site because we, I'm just looking at how we make ours better. Fair enough. Look, I, I kind of come from the school of thought that says spend no more than you need to to get the thing up and running. So we built our member site on WordPress and Opt- Optimize, uh, Optimize Press, which is a sort of plugin that sits over the top and just makes it like super easy. Uh, I think we'll get to a point where maybe we need a bit more functionality. I mean, WordPress is fantastic. And I think it's by far the most malleable and simple uh, platform out there for building websites, member sites, blogs. Uh, but a lot of people that use things like Kajabi. Uh, but man, if I was, I kind of, I just think uh, as the websites, the, the, the functionality for a member site, it's got to look good. It's got to be logically uh, organized and it's got to be something you don't need a coder uh, ideally to manage, especially if you're a small business. So I'd go personally, WordPress and Optimize Press has been worked really well for us. Hey, and I think, Stu, one important thing about a member site is, and I mean, we, we thought we knew what we wanted, but I, I think before you start, like what, what, what's the objective? Yeah. What, what do you want it to do? Is, is this something for clients? Is this something for, um, to attract new clients? Is it something you're doing for the love of it? I mean, mm. we... So, you know, Matt and I had different objectives when we came into energy. He, he just wanted, this is the dolphin in him. He just wanted to, to help, help people. And then my side of it was, well, how do we make money out of that? So yeah. my side was the business side. He, he, he wanted to change people's lives. So, um, you know, I'd say be clear on, we didn't want advertising. So it wasn't a, wasn't a model. Um, we wanted it to be independent. So it's like, well, what, what do you want a member's portal for? What do, what do you do? Is it, is, is it for clients? And then if it is for clients, um, the big thing that's not in Energy's balance sheet is the opportunity cost of our, you know, hours. So that, yeah. that by far would, would, would be massive. So, yeah. Yeah. so the, as you know, our program leverage is all about building a scalable model. And a scalable model means... There is stuff in there that exponentially grows. In other words, your profit margin doesn't sort of keep track of your expenses. And a member site in that model uh, does a few things. It gives you the ability to provide people with access to the knowledge and the information without having to go through you as the advisor, which I think is a big constraint. Secondly, it means that when you're coming and having a conversation with a client, it's like the Khan Academy thing we spoke about. Go and watch this video. Go and consume that information. So when we sit down and have a conversation, we can talk about how to apply the information with you rather than me explain for the hundredth time what ranking credits are or whatever that might be. Yeah. Uh, and the third bit about it, it's about automating stuff. It's about recognizing that I want to have touch points out there with clients that don't rely on, you know, Stuart in the office to remember to do this, remember to do that. And I think that's, uh, that's the power of a member site if you get it right. And it also provides a focal point. So that's kind of, yeah, yeah. my view. Hey, I, I want to make sure, because we could go on and talk about this for hours and I think it's a super interesting topic. Let's talk about engagement because you've got yep. this, this, this kind of, it's, it's kind of got this party going. You've built the yep. platform and you need some guests. And I yep. think such a big hole to fall in, which is you put all the effort in and then, you know, the whole, <laughs> the field of dreams. If you build it, they will come. That's nonsense, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And we talked about it before. Like, I, I look at, um, this is what makes me feel old. I see all the, and I think they're realizing it now, but all the rise of kind of robo advice, what would that be two years ago, 18 months ago, yeah. it kind of started and you know, they're all going direct and they're all going to, you know, smash it and come to us. I mean, we, we found, you know, eight years ago, we, we went out and said, Hey, come, come to us, pay $8.50 a month and we'll give you financial education. And I think, I think we've got 30 people. So and we tried affiliate models. We, oh, mate, if, yeah, we could have all day going back through all the graveyards that kind of energy's left behind. So, mm. and then we've become, you know, a, so, so that the consumer model was never going to work. And, and even our employer model didn't work because we'd wander in there and, and educate them that are more financially 
literate workforce they have and there's all these studies around they'll be more focused at work there'll be less absenteeism less stress less fights all that kind of stuff that's all cool and they agree with all of that mm-hmm. and then and then you say down the end right i say we'll, we'll roll this out and it'll cost you 10 grand a year and they're like oh no we we don't want to have to pay for it like yeah. you know that's what our super fund's for that's what our you know advisor that does our risk is for so so we had a lot of traction in the HR community, but but when it came to then getting a check, um, they 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 didn't do it. So so when it, so no, so yeah, our engagement didn't work. Now in saying that, um, there was no we didn't have Twitter, there was no Facebook. We we didn't we didn't build a still energy doesn't have a you know a, a social kind of community if you like. So mm-hmm. so I, I can't say that that wouldn't work. Um, but I still think you're up against it as far as, you know, f- f- superannuation is kind of boring. So, so mm. from that point of view, people don't wake up on a Sunday morning and go, you know what, I need to read about tax. Yeah. So that doesn't generally happen. So so where we're finding on the engagement side of things, so let I'll talk about our experience with the with the practices that are using our platform. Yeah, so they basically, right. for those that don't know, um, they can turn up and brand our knowledge center and, and off you go, you don't have to build it. Um, you can obviously um, modify fight customize and things like that and it, it is interesting seeing different firms use it differently so we've got some firms if you like down one end that just send a newsletter and do nothing else and then they'll get you know this level of engagement and it also depends on the firm so if i've got a a, a solo um, advisor business that has a hundred clients that's it and they run the knowledge center the engagement's usually fairly high because mm. that plan has got a good relationship and then we've got businesses that have one planner and have 1500 clients now yeah. i would i would say that half of those in inverted commas clients wouldn't even know they've got a planner so the engagement and we can see through open rates so the engagement with a practice like that is a lot lower so you might mm. get your email open rates at 28 percent for a practice like that mm-hmm. for an engaged practice you might it might be 90 percent. so okay. uh, so it really varies but you know, I, I would see whether, you know, it's our, our knowledge center or someone builds their own knowledge center. Another good mate of mine um, who, who just stepped down from being head of a dealer group said, if, I was worried about people ripping off our stuff. Actually, it was, it was my planner client service proposition. He said, mate, a fool with a tool is still a fool. <laughs> so so the, That's going the resource on. that you build is just a resource. Our our knowledge center, it's like a Toyota Camry, right? So it sits there, it, it just is, and it will do what it does. It, it's then up to, if you like, that advisor that has the relationship with that group of clients or that group of contacts or their center of influence with how they then apply that. So I can drive my Toyota Camry every Sunday, it'll work, it'll be reliable, and that's cool. Or I can pimp it up and put some mag wheels on it, a spoiler, and I can drive it 100 Ks, you know, um, every day if I want to, um, and it will it will still work. So it's totally up to you know each practice. What what I would recommend with something like a content platform, obviously communication. We do ours monthly. I think Australian Unity did the biggest survey on its kind on on the optimal time to be in communication. They surveyed their own planning clients. Um, they found that weekly was too much. I I don't disagree with that. I think you know I, I keep thinking that if I was a client as well, I probably would have weekly communication from my planner. Um, quarterly was too far between drinks and I would agree with that as well because you got the likes of Coles and Google will be there soon there's so much noise around kind of finance and money you want to make sure your brand is in the mix um but then you know so that's the newsletters but but what have you got playing on your tv you know in reception what what have you got on your um your agenda for their annual review. Do you have something like, you know, and I'll keep using ours because it's there, but our, you know, knowledge center on there. So say to the client, what are you enjoying in here? What are you not enjoying? Even if they go, well, I've never even looked at it. It's like, well, why? And I think if I look at our client base and we're lucky enough to to have a lot of planners that have won awards that are that are reasonably well known in the industry, and that's not because of us, but what but what is awesome is that the knowledge center and empowering clients and educating clients fits with those advisors value sets mm. so that does that make sense so i remember Perfect. early on we had a pitch to a planner and they said oh um you don't want your clients knowing too much and i thought <laughs> wow 
have, have you heard of Google? Yeah. <laughs> if, clients, if clients want to know, they will know. But, but I think that's very old school. I don't think yeah. that's around you know, too much anymore. Right. So, so even if they're not using it, in an annual review, I'd be saying, well, <clears throat> the reason we got it is that we care about you. So, so there needs to be leadership. We have some practices that when they launch, and this is still on the engagement question, every now and then we'll have a practice that says, oh, we want to go with the knowledge center. We're going to invite clients to join. And I, you know, I'm getting old and stubborn these days. I'm like, no, don't do that because that won't work. Because if, if you send stuff out to clients going, hey, this is here, would you like to join? Yeah. It's just not to. So, so use some leadership and go out to your client base and say your knowledge on money is important. We are trying to help you and, and we both need to be responsible for this. So um, you, you will get an email from me. You will have a knowledge centre and we will, we will keep discussing it. So, so that's where I, you know, more city engagement sits, you know, um, on the annual review agendas. If you've got a content base, um, you know, I think where it can, and the knowledge centre was in the beginning just for clients, but now, you know, it gets used a lot more for kind of social media. For yeah. Yeah respective clients doing time bomb logins to get centers of influence in there we got some practices that have three knowledge centers so they have um one for their private clients one for their corporate business and they'll have one with a jv with a say a big employer or something like that so once you've got the resource how can you use it how can you leverage it mate this has been i feel like we could talk about this to the blue in the face but i think the one thing i took Isn't out of that three hours? Yeah, <laughs> you know what? We can keep going if you want. Um, I think it's. I think that's a really key point, which is if you use your knowledge center or your member site, and you just have it as a backwater thing that you never really refer to, you never really apply, you just assume uh, clients are going to use it themselves. Then that's exactly what it's going to be. But if you place importance on it, if you put it at the center of your business, if you direct them there, if you use content from it and get it out in social media, if you you know give put a create a video as part of your onboarding which says. You need to go to the member site because these are five things you need to know when you start working with us. Then people will start to realize, oh, they'll learn the behavior. This is the source of truth for, for what I need to know about working with uh, Rob or whoever. That's, uh, I think that's really, really, really key to get your head around. This is not just a bolt-on service piece. This is a central piece of uh, having a digital um, component. Hey, Rob, I want to do two things because I want to, I, want to, I want to ask you what you're up to at the moment. I want to know uh, sort of what's, uh, how people can know more about you. And then I want to, we've got some great questions coming through. So I want to fire those at you uh, before we sort of go too far over. So, mate, give us an understanding. Where is energy at right now? What, what are you doing at the moment? What are you working on and what, uh, what are your next steps? Uh, great question. There's lots of different fronts to that. So obviously being now in, in inside of Iris. So um, we still have our standalone version of the Knowledge Centre, which will always be there. And funnily enough, that's what we're up to now. In, in two weeks, we're just about to roll out a massive load of enhancements, which we, we've been working on for about 12 months. So that's, I'm looking forward to that. Um, more kind of mobile work, all that kind of stuff, um, a lot more kind of functionality. So, so that'll be nice to roll out. At the same time, so I've kind of almost got two products now. Um, so I'm trying to help, if you like, X-Plan um, have their own knowledge center. So, that, so the beauty of where it, energy was never a CRM. So we do have a database, there is a membership there, but we knew that people are going to use Xplan or Coin or Midwinter or Salesforce or Sugar or whatever they're going to use, we are not going to be a CRM. So um, and it hasn't been a weakness of ours, but, but it is one thing as far as segmenting clients and all that kind of stuff. You can't do that on, on our platform. Okay. So what I'm looking forward to seeing with Xplan is saying, right, now you've got a database and you've got segmentation and you've got the, like, like what you're saying, the process of setting up kind of different threads and things like that underpinning this content. So, um, but that's been hard work, mate. Like that's 18 months now and, and you know, you're part of a bigger beast and they have to work with hmm. um, their system. Uh, you know, for them, for, for me to now say, you can't have a newsletter that once they click on it, that you need to log in. That, do, that doesn't work. People, mm. people don't do that. No way. So that's a change in, you know, explain traditionally with their online stuff. You've got to log in. We've got to know who you are. Um, so, that, so that's been a, a change. So, so working on those two things and, um, and doing, a, doing a heap of demos. So um, that, that's basically what, what I'm doing at the moment. Perfect. I think that's a really good point. You know, 
if you're dealing with people who trust you, know you, uh, and get it, they'll, they'll, they'll give you their information. But if you're dealing with people at the top of your funnel, the email is a currency and you have to earn that currency by adding value. So give value before you expect to go, here's my logon details. Cause that's, that's just a, that's a rookie error. Mate, um, yeah. that's insightful. Mate, if people wanted to know more about you, or wanted to sort of, uh, find out more about energy, where can they go? What's uh, what's the one thing you'd love people to do off the back of this webinar? If they like what you're, oh, what you're um, saying. So, um, I mean, they can email me, Robert at, well, I've got a couple of email addresses now, but Robert at energy, if you can spell that, .com.au. Um, if people want to see what they build, and I'm not precious around, um, uh, I guess, and I said to you yesterday, I don't want this to be a product vlog. So, so being an ex-planner, I, I am very um, sensitive to being kind of sold stuff. So I'm more than happy for people to even see what we do and do a demo and, mm -hmm. and and at the end of the day, they don't have to do anything with it. And, and that's more what I see our process. I go, right, the more people I see and say, hey, this is our knowledge center, it'll suit some people, it won't suit other people. So, so if you want to do a, a demo and show you through what we've built, which will give you all the nuts, we've got uh, all the nuts, all the nuts and bolts <laughs> behind it. Um, there is at energy.com.au, at that landing page, there's there's three buttons and one of them says book a demo. So so you can do that if you want to, if you want me to show you kind of, you know, what, what we've done. So that's the easiest thing. Yeah, I mean, for those people who are wanting to build their own thing, I think going there and just checking it out, and you're going to see sort of something that's very well established, very well developed, and has some, had some input from a great range of, of thought leaders, writers, content developers as well. But uh, if you are, you know, if you're one of these people who's just like, you know, oh, I, I, I want the thing, I don't want the build, then, uh, you know, that's an option too. And I think of all of the solutions I've come across without doing too much product, product vlog, energy is the one that is most, you know, implement it, white label it, and then almost, you know, you, you don't have to worry about it that much. Yeah. So, got some awesome questions. And uh, really appreciate everybody sticking around. So they love what, they obviously love what you're talking about. So let's run through the questions. We've got some good ones. Um, Andrea says, any tips just to get client engagement on the member site, other than what we've spoken to? Any additional ones that, you know, are, are really, really relevant? Um, so apart from the ones we've talked about, so obviously, you know, for us, uh, if you look at a member site, I'll give you the stats because I don't think I gave you that. Our monthly, when our newsletter goes out and we'll typically have five to seven pieces of content in there. So two videos, three articles, and we might focus on a module or a calculator or something. So, mm -hmm. so to have that variety in your, in your emails, um, the other thing, what, once they're on there for an engagement, we spend a lot of time in hyperlinking. So, so one thing I talk about is having dead end articles. So you don't kind of go these days to a news site or something like that, and they're not taking you somewhere else. We do spend probably 10% of our time when we put content together um, interlinking. So we know now that when a person comes on the Knowledge Centre, on average, they look at seven pages. So we do get that, which you don't get from a kind of a PDF or something like that. Um, what's this going to say? So that's monthly monthly newsletters. You know, we've seen some. Um, planners, kind of what Stuart was referring to, actually build templates. So if a client rings up and says, hey, um, we're, we're expecting a baby, that they've already got the videos out of the knowledge and the articles, whatever it is, and they go, yeah. oh, great, and they get off the phone and it looks like they've put it together, but they, you know, just put it together, but they've put it together, you know, um, before. So, um, you know, we, we've got just stories, we've got planners that go to their centres of influence and one, it's a really good demonstration uh, around transparency and adding value. And one planner said to an accountant, look, you know, I'm happy to give, you 10 logins to our knowledge center if you find some clients that you think it might it might value so so getting out there and getting kind of prospective clients um you know on there as well we have planners that use it with staff so that educate their staff so staff that come in that are new they get them to read the modules do the quizzes and all that kind of stuff so um so it's about kind of you know mixing up the content chatting about it um, yeah, using it on on social media as well. So, and we we only have really a small percentage of people that use social media out of, out of our whole client base. There's only a handful. So it's interesting you mentioned the staff because one of the things we work on as part of the leverage program is operation manuals. And essentially, what we've got in the program is we set people up with their own version of a member's site for training their staff members. So all of their processes, oh, system, cool. screen recorded, bang, and it's a phenomenal training resource. And I imagine that's. Uh, you know, your your platform could could be the same to bringing people in, really understanding the protocols. You know, if clients ask for this, here's a video you can send them, or alternatively, yeah. learn the information and answer it yourself um, within the context of general advice, as long as they're qualified. Just to put that one in there, 
Um, the other question I wanted, uh, Greg asked, once you have a member, how do you keep them engaged? So I'm talking, uh, how do we get them engaged? So, so just, to, just, to, yeah, just to qualify that for us, so energy doesn't have a, I guess, a, a consumer model. So, so we're, we're a B2B and then, if you like, the advisors have got the, the, the members. So yeah. um, one downside of us building a platform or having that, that being wholesale, we don't know who a client is and who a non-client is, if you like, of the planning um, practice. So, but I think, um, how do you keep a member? Are we saying if they're a client, yeah. um, you know, they should be a member? That's a bit of a different propos proposition. You know, that's just keeping a client. If you're talking about keeping a member as in a non-client, um, that it is a, you know, it's someone that's just come and signed up. I mean, really the only thing you can do is that regular communication yeah. and, and keeping it, keep it interesting because you're not going to know their date of birth. You can't send them unless, unless you want to capture that. We, we don't. So you don't know whether they're kind of 65 or, or 30. Um, another trap that I hear a little bit around um, that, I think there's two schools of thought. I, I'm I'm in the middle, you know, to have really targeted content. So Stu's got kids, let, let, or you know, what what are you, Stu? You, you'd be 31. So yeah, so let's just set, let's just send Stu stuff for around 31. And um, I think you're missing an opportunity there if you do that. So I get that we want to know who Stu is and service him in that way. We've got an aged care animation in the knowledge center, and the um, inspiration for that was my dad sitting there on a Sunday saying, I'm trying to get Nana into aged care and it's a nightmare, all the stuff you need to think about. And I'm like, oh, wow, that'd be a great idea for animation. So if I was on the receiving end of that animation, I would have gone, wow, this is great. Dad just talked to me on the weekend. I'd flick that through to dad. So, mm. so potentially then there's another, oh, let's call the lead. I wouldn't call it a prospective client that, that that planner's brain can get in front of. So, so I think one of the dangers, if you looked at Rob and said, Rob's 40, he's not, he, you know, he looks old, he's not quite an aged care, and you don't send me that, um, you could limit the opportunities, depending on the practice that you want to build. If you're only targeting 50-year-old doctors, mm. that's a bit um, different. But if you're happy to take on, you know, a 40-year-old earning lots of money or a 60-year-old that's got lots of money, then, then uh, and I would educate clients around that. So when you launch, there was a question early on about how you launch it. So, yeah. and I think in a, in a couple of different ways. So we launched by email, but then um, it's then up to the practice. I'd be, I'd be talking to clients about it and educating them on it. So we have this again, and I know I said this before, but because we care. And we also care for your extended family. So, so if you have kids or you have mums and dads or cousins or whatever that you think this would benefit, we, we want to help. So, so, so get them to, I mean, we got some sign up features. So I imagine, you know, if you're building your own stuff, you'd want to do this as well. So, yeah. you know, get them to go to our site and, and become a member and then they can benefit from that as well. We're not going to flog them a product. We're just going to, we're just going to educate them. So um, I think the other thing quickly on education too, is one thing I talked about a bit, which was at the uni, whenever anyone educates you, Mm -hmm. um, respect changes hands. So, so I'm big on if we can teach people stuff, don't don't link up to Money Smart's website. Good website. They've spent over ten million bucks producing it. But the minute you take someone there, you're giving Money Smart the opportunity to educate and build a relationship with that person. Mm. And, and the next time they want to know something, they're not going to like clicks are important. They're not going to come to your website but then go across to Money Smart. So um, they'll go straight to Money Smart. So so it's about educating clients that you are the source of truth come to you first um, and that's why you've got this resource 24 7 that's the other that's the other trick I think when, when I know certainly for my wife and I I mean when when do you look at finances Stu when, when do you sit down and go I've got to look at our banking or got to look at my super fund when do you look at it we do it monthly we've got a, a session we but, sit but, down. but I mean what, what what time oh well you you run your own business so you might be lucky that you do it during the day but for most families, it's night time is where yeah. I was getting to. So it's at nine o'clock at night. Is, the kids yeah. are in bed. Let's have a look at our budget. You know, the planner's not normally going to take a call at that Absolutely. time. So I need that resource to come. And I really don't want to get flogged a product. So, I, you know, I'd really rather not Google. And if my planners give me a safe place to learn, yeah. awesome. It's, it's incredible the number of client surveys I've done. And time and time again, you ask the question, what's your primary source of information? And they say, you are. Uh, and you know, you ask Google, what should I do with my money? You're going to get some shocking answers. And I think Absolutely. turning around and saying, this is curated information. 
It's the stuff that's relevant to you uh, and it's quality, not just quantity. Hey, um, Anne wants to ask, and maybe you can help. Uh, what are some magnets? Maybe we've already asked this, but magnets is in downloadable content that you find gets people to, to come, al come along to the site most frequently. Oh, great question. We, we started experimenting, oh, how long ago was it? Two years ago with, um, so the titles of our articles, for example, um, have, have changed. I think the, the animations are key. So we started doing those. So we've got about 30 of those now. So that was a couple of years ago too. So that, that has worked. And we get, if you like, third-party comments from end clients as well as our planners saying, you know, our clients are loving the videos. Um, so you see it, it's almost gone a bit overkill now, you know, seven traps for, um, uh, you know, renovators or something like that. So our most popular article was I think the 10 most common mistakes retirees make. And, yeah. and that one went through the roof because no one wants to make those mistakes. Yeah. So, sure um, so we've been playing with that a little while well, for, for 18 months and, and that, that has been working. So not, you know, interest rates or not, not, um, you know, superannuation beneficiaries. We, we used to communicate like that, but now it's, you know, the, the, the picture, the image and the heading is vital. So um, if you don't get them on that, you, you'll, you'll miss them. So, so being very careful, that, that's to get people reading your stuff. I mean, we, we don't use downloads a lot, um, you know, videos and articles and then, then that interlinking. We, we have had feedback um, from a practice or that that a client in and I, I don't think this is the norm i think this is abnormal um the client came in three weeks later and said i've read all of the modules and all of the articles to the planner and i said to the planner it must be a teacher or an engineer and he said yeah engineer so so what's good is that most clients won't read all the modules but isn't mm. it good to have the resource for those clients that would yeah so um, so he's satisfied that client's need by actually having that resource. I just add to that, uh, and uh, downloadables. A lot of people create eBooks, don't, because everybody downloads an eBook. They look at it and they go, I'll "Read it later." Uh, it's yeah. good, I think it's. I got, a, I got a heap of those filed somewhere. <laughs> I think whatever you think your eBook is, choose the best piece of information there and and just do that bit. It's got to be uh, digestible in five to seven minutes. Uh, it's got to be something that people can act on. So don't make it theory, make it something you can do. And most importantly, if you can make it that they get a result, maybe it's a script to negotiate their phone bill or it's you know, a question to ask uh, their industry super fund about fees that they, they come back and go, that was incredible. That's gonna whet their appetite for going, what else have you got? And that's, uh, that's really the height of automated uh, marketing when they, they come to you and go, I want your stuff. That's really what we're looking for. Uh, Tom Blackhurst. Hey, Tom wants to know. Oh, by the way, Andrea, thank you very much. I appreciate you sticking around. Uh, Tom wants to know when. When do you provide access to clients? When do you recommend and how do you introduce it to them? Okay, great, great question. So, so two things in there. So I would give every client access and, and straight away. So First day, um, second day? Like what, first what oh, the, the, Oh, sorry, if you're, if you're launching, I'd give it all to them. No, no, I'd actually give it to the prospective client. So I'll, right. I'll, give, I'll give you an example of that. So, so Stu comes in and sits down with me. I do my first meeting, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> and I, everybody's got a different um, process. I used to spend two hours with that client. And then um, basically the next step was the SOA. I, did, I, didn't do, I didn't do kind of multi kind of gathering info meetings. So... If I said to Stu, look, love to have you on board, and Stu goes, look, I want to go and have a think about that, that's the time that I go, no worries, sounds good. Part of what we run here at Skinner Financial Planning is we've got an online knowledge centre. It's an extension of our service. We do care about our clients' knowledge on money. What I'm going to do by the time you get home, you'll have a login in there. I'm happy to give you six months access. So um, whether you become a client or not, here it is. So that's, that's the time I would give. So, so before they're a client, and a couple of things happen then. So, so one, you're going to get home and, and I've got, you've got something. You've got something of value. You haven't committed to me, but you've got something. Mm -hmm. um, arguably at a time where you're more likely going to use it. Because in that meeting I just had, we might have talked about split lines of credit and trauma insurance and all that kind of stuff. So my head's spinning. Um, and, and this was another reason why I wanted to create something is that clients would leave my meetings going, wow, my head's full. And I'm thinking, yeah, well, how do you? how do you know what a rep account is in a Frankie and Crown? So they come back and say, Rob, here's my 2 million bucks. I trust you. And that kind of wasn't good enough for me. I'm like, no, 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 you don't understand. And you're going to give me this money. That's a massive call. So 
so the prospective client goes home, so or Stu goes home and he's going, I wasn't quite sure, or, or he has an argument with his wife on what a wrap account is. Now he can get in and have a look around. Um, it looks good, it's professional. So for Stu again, he goes, right, you know, Rob, skin and financial planning actually really do care and they've got a reasonable resource here. And the third thing, if Stu's slacking coming back to me, that's where that regular communication comes in as well. So an email goes out, you know, next month going, oh, you know, here's our new additions to our knowledge center this month. So, so Tom, that's where I'd give it to a client before they're even a client. I think it can help that sales process and just put another feather in the bow. Um, as far as all other clients, we've had some practices say, oh, very few, but when, when they launch it to their existing business, so they go, we're going to launch it over time. We're going to sign them up over the next 12 months. And I kind of look at that and go, well, why wouldn't you give it to them now? Like, what, why wouldn't you? What if you've got a client that you're not going to get around to month 11 um, to introduce this to when they've got a question about trauma insurance at month two that they're Googling? So they, so they don't know you have this resource. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I'd be giving it to them as early as I could. Okay, that's, that's really good to know. Uh, what else we got here? Sean, thank you for being so patient. He's got a whole bunch of questions. Uh, I might just fire them at you. You can tell me yes, no. And if you, uh, Sean, if you want to talk more, I'm sure Rob would be happy to sort of field the questions. Uh, energy, full white labeling? Yeah, so we, we do a subdomain. So we own the um, knowledgecenter.com.au or financialknowledgecenter.com.au, banners, call to actions, pictures, colors, all that kind of stuff, yeah. Actually, before I just go any further, Greg Unfield said, for photos, Unsplashed. Uh, they're free photos. So I've, I've been meaning to mention that one for a while. Oh, okay. Check it out, Unsplashed. Uh, back to Sean's questions. Uh, I, I popped it in the notes as well. Can you upload your... Can he can the advisor upload their own content plus access to inner content, which I think is a yes, right? Yep, yep, yep. absolutely. Uh, embed into WordPress. Uh, we don't we don't embed, but you redirect. So, yeah. yeah. So so normally our clients would have a page on their knowledge center saying, "Hey, we're really cool. We care." Blah blah blah. You know, here's our knowledge center or whatever that is, and then and then that page opens up. And Sean, if you go and check Jeff Whidden's page, uh, he actually uses Energy, so you can see how that looks uh, when you get in there, which is Dome Financial. Uh, but I know there's a, there's a back end, a pretty user friendly back end that advisors can jump into and add, take, edit stuff. So yeah, it's 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 actually better than a WordPress to be honest, because the it's a custom made platform and it just it's not as I don't think it's as malleable, but it does everything you need to. Uh, he wants to talk about the pricing model. Uh, if you want to, yep. you know, send him through some information or mention it now, it's entirely up to you. Yeah, I, I can. I'm happy to mention it now. So, um, and that's where there was a change with 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 um, Iris. But different dealer groups have different pricing as well. So I'll give you the give you the rack rate. Um, lots of the major groups have an agreement with Iris, which then there there's a fairly reasonable discount. But we charge um, nine hundred bucks to do all the branding, um, setting up, adding members, doing the launch, giving words. We do actually an animation that sits on the website and all that kind of stuff. So we normally charge 900 bucks set up and roll out. And then um, it's 425 a month. That's the rack rate. Um, normally with the dealer group, oh, yeah, the discounts vary. But um, so, and what that gets someone with the knowledge center is obviously the knowledge center on an ongoing basis, but then three new articles, two new videos include the animation, the newsletter and the reporting behind that as well. And someone could go and upload their own videos if they wanted yep. to. Perfect. Okay. Takes about takes about forty seconds to upload a video. Wow, that's faster than Vimeo. Mm. Oh, uh, sorry, in, we embed them. So yeah, right. sorry, we don't upload them. Yep. Um, can be, I think we covered this? Can be used for automated onboarding. I'm, I don't think there's a lot of uh, automation in there, is there? No. So so because we're not a CRM, so you could do that with your own CRM. So, but not, you know, I think that X plan will have that functionality when it's all finished. But, um, so we, we can't do that automation, but, but, um, you know, if you're using a CRM, I imagine you can set. So every page on the knowledge center, every article, every menu, they all have hyperlinks. So, um, you could set up your own templates if you wanted to. Sean's a features man. So I'm going to keep going. Uh, can you embed and link other tools like Calendly scheduling buttons, links to other pages, video meeting tools, etc.? He's a big um, Yeah, so we have, yeah, yes and no, book in for a demo, Sean. So, so basically, yeah. we've, got a, um, we've got an area where 
uh, we've got call to action buttons so you can upload your own jpeg and have a hyperlink behind that in different areas of the knowledge center right you know in our calculator section if you want to link to other calculators you can add calculators you can add you know articles and all that kind of stuff so so there's a there's a reasonable amount of things that you can do that and, and you can do that by yourself so that's part of what she was referring to we have this thing called the admin site which is where we hand over the control of the knowledge center to you so if you want to add edit delete content or call to action buttons and things like that. You can do that yourself. Yeah, and uh, Jeffrey, no problem at all. Glad you enjoyed it. Uh, you've got, Jeffrey's just saying he's got a client who's arrived, so he's got to head off. John, don't say sorry, mate. I would be asking, and as uh, Rob knows, I ask pretty much exactly the same questions. Get straight down to the, I know what it's for. I love it. What can it do? Uh, the final question you wanted to ask was external links to video and articles without logging in. In other words, the content you provide, they click on it, yep. they, I believe they get access to it. You, you don't have that barrier unless they want to go further. Great, great, great question. We've got public private content. So, so it used to be private. So we've been a real beneficiary of kind of social media and, and people wanting content. So, um, and advisors can control it on our site. It's one thing, you know, a topic we didn't talk about, but it's important to have public and private, like the Fin Review has. So we have a level of content that if you're a prospective client, you can come on, you can read some articles, play with some calculators, watch some videos, but you will only get so far and then it will tell you you need to be a member to log in. So either log in if you're not a member and you'd like a membership, we do have some either auto sign up or or request a membership. But that that is an important point, which um, you know we, we've been lucky as a as a platform to learn from our practices. Like it's been great, you know, learning and growing and getting demand from if you like planners saying, hey, can it do this? Can it do that? So, so private public is important. We do sometimes get the question, look, can we turn it all public? And I think that really dilutes the value to the member. So, so we don't make it all public. I think it's really key to give people a glimpse into little bits and pieces, but yeah. uh, sort of, you know, make them realize that they're not getting the whole thing. Uh, <laughs> embed YouTube Vimeo comment from existing channels. Yeah, I believe yep. you can embed. Absolutely. Hey, um, I, think, I think we've covered off pretty much all the questions. Sean, man, it looks like you should jump over to the, to the site. Look, I've, I, as I said, I've, I've known and been recommending NG for about five years, and it's always been one of those things. If you want to build your own thing, uh, then you know there's a bunch of options optimized for Kajabi. But if you just want the platform, which is one of the reasons why I said to you what three years ago, can I have the platform without the content? Yeah, uh, it's <laughs> it's yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty pretty schmick, and I, I think it's pretty well priced as well. Hey, this has been incredible. I mean, like I came here hoping that it would be awesome, and it's been beyond awesome. And I really appreciate Robert that you've come in here and just given us insight and uh stuff that i've it's been a pleasure to learn from from your experiences and really as always you, you're you're a, you're very generous with your time and with your information so i want to thank you very much um, hey, thank you i mean you're generous with your time too mate so i'm more, more than happy to share it's a pleasure man i i think uh this, it's a credit to you that you stuck with this you've had such a vision of doing it when i mean i remember sitting down with you wasn't that long ago we were talking about fintech and you just said man i was in fintech when it wasn't called fintech and it was just this advisor technology backwater that no one had any interest in so you must be looking at the way it's taken off and just uh being enjoying having been there at the very beginning and before the beginning really yeah it's phenomenal cool uh if there are any questions uh feel free to uh sort of shoot them through to robert i think he gave the email address the notes are all there but it's robert at energy i n e r g i dot com dot au or alternatively, uh, whack across the energy site and, and you can sort of learn more about it. But other than that, uh, yeah, this for a number of you on the program, member sites is something that is really coming up fast as an opportunity to build a scalable uh, service off this. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, in particular with Andrea and a couple of others in uh, sort of helping you sort of build that sort of stuff. But for now, Robert, mate, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. Enjoy your weekend. And as always, mate, really appreciate uh, you taking the time to tell us about uh, what you're doing. Cool. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks very much. And uh, yeah, everybody else, enjoy your weekend and uh, see you soon. Ta da.